I made Christopher Johnson's rifle from District 9. Here's how I did it. As always, I begin with hand sketching and research. I use the movie as reference, as well as online images of the replicas made by Weta Workshop. I then created a limework blueprint of the rifle and taped the sheets of paper together once printed. Because of the margins, there are slight gaps in the blueprint, but it's okay. It's not enough to ruin the overall design. Here's what it looks like so far. To reinforce the flimsy paper, I added duct tape to the back side. I did this because it's a lot easier to trace out shapes from thicker paper. Using my sharp box cutter, I set my blueprint free. Once fully cut out, it's just a matter of tracing, cutting, and gluing the pieces together over and over. For extra support, I cut out a PVC pipe, which will act as the core of the rifle. I cut out a section from the EVA foam, and the pipe will be glued in between layers. That's really the name of the game, layers. In addition to the half-inch EVA foam, I also use thin craft foam ranging from 1 to 5 millimeters in thickness. The template I made is just a guide, so there are definitely many spontaneous adjustments that I made during the building process. The important thing is that you always use sharp blades and have some patience. The main body of the rifle is now done. So next, we're going to move on to the large canisters. The canisters, I recycled old plastic bottles. The idea is to use these bottles as structure. I will then wrap craft foam around these cylinders to get the effect that I want. There's a lot of detail work going on for these parts, but the same principles still apply. I use my reference images and find materials that I can recycle. I keep going, and then it's on to the scope. I really have no idea what's going on here. It appears to be some sort of alien targeting system. I, I really don't know how it works. Anyway, as usual, I just keep making simple shapes and layer them together. Despite not knowing exactly what I was making, I just followed my gut and kept going. Here's what the two scope components look like. This last part of the build took me almost to the end of the month to figure out. The 24 side tubes. Using aftermarket Nerf Mega Darts, foam dowels, and 3 8 inch PEX pipe, I was able to come up with a solution that resembles the original design of the rifle. It's sort of like a test tube, but with a ball and socket joint at the end. Before painting, I touch up gaps and seams by adding in quick seal. It's an easy way to tidy up some uneven edges to become smoother. Now, we take this outside. Using white and black plastic dip, I use multiple thin layers to cover all of the parts that I made. After a few hours, I bring the parts back inside for some acrylic paintwork. Nothing too fancy here, just paint, paintbrushes, and lots of masking tape.
After I got the base colors of black, white, and orange, it was time to dirty it up. Using a damp cloth, I wipe away shades of diluted brown and yellow to give the rifle a weathered and worn look. We're almost done here, but we still have some decal work. Using masking tape and a sharp blade, I draw out the designs and very carefully cut them out. I will then use these as stencils as I brush over them with black and white paints. When I peel off the tape, what's left will be my cutouts. It's in some alien language and I have no idea what they mean, but they definitely look cool. Off camera, I finished off the build by applying a clear coat spray paint, and we are done. This build took me under four weeks just by working on it little by little every day. It's a satisfying feeling being able to see all the pieces come together, and overall I'm really happy with the final results. Maybe in the future I'll make the alien hand that goes with the rifle, so I'll be able to use this alien technology. But until then, thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Oh, we have to throw the cat food!